Hi guys. Today I wanted to show you a new um, set of rules I purchased yesterday and I had a quick read um, called Triumph. Um, these rules were suggested to me by a friend uh, after he found out that I've been reading the last few weeks DBMM. Um, and I enjoy DBMM rules. I enjoy the mechanics and I enjoy uh, the features. Uh, of, again, of course, there are some issues with the understanding everything, but um, I would suggest this rule set as a very good DPMM substitute. Uh, and I decided, after reading it, I was very impressed, I decided to uh, showcase them to you. So Triumph is a medieval and ancient rule set that was designed by Washington Grant Company. It is, uh, it, it's a really, this is uh, the digital form I bought for $15 from um, War Games Vault, but I think you have um, a hard copy released recently, I think. Here, the the table of contents and everything, the, the, the rules are brilliantly designed. Um, they, uh, uh, they have all the analysis, and of course, here we have the links for uh, the site, the support sites that will go on afterwards. No, um, let's start by talking about the game. Something that I really enjoyed about the game is that you can use any type of basing. It's based on deck base width, and you can use any type of basing, uh, or most of the basing uh, you have, as long as they're both um, of the same type. Uh, basic gameplay, very close to the BMM role for command points, the active player roles for command points, the one who won the initiative, of course, tactical movement, range combat phase from both, close combat phase from both, and um, uh, then the, this goes again to the um, inactive player. Now you have victory conditions. You have uh, army composition, the board game. These are the, you know, the basics that you have in every army list, uh, the standard sizes of table, the MUs, movement units are uh, equal um, to half of the base width. Um, here you have what front edge, side edge, rear edge means. The battle cards, battle cards, very nice, very nice um, um, feature. I mean, you had battle cards before, but I like this because the battle cards basically overrule, override rules. So the battle cards will be used and uh, you will have them in your army list that are plenty available in um, the supporting sites. Um, We'll discuss about the battle cards in the end, uh, and uh, uh, you can use them at a certain point in the battle. And uh, here you have design notes explaining everything, point system. Now here's the terrain, uh, very clearly explain how the camps and the terrain is is placed. Um, you have also terrain cards, many terrain cards in the end of the of the rule book, so they can help you with the generating nice battlefields. A very nice uh, explanation of what flank and rear contact means. And this setting up the game also, terrain, terrain score and topography. Every army has characteristics um, that play important role in the deployment and you get advantages and disadvantages. Again, placing terrain pieces are very, 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 this is very well written. This is basically a very well written DBMM with some um, very interesting uh, features, extra extra rules that, of course, are generated by DBMM, but very well explained. Uh, so, certain deployment. This is a very nice set of rules. During deployment, each player is required to place at least 24 points of troops in the center third of the game board. These troops are uh, the army's center deployment, and these troops have these characteristics. They, in the army list, they will tell you uh, line troops, center deployment. These troops should be deployed in the center. A turn of sequence, we discussed about this before. Command distance, um, I hear also deploying camps and troops. Here it shows you very clearly how the command distance works and if the command distance is blo it's blocked. Uh, wood hills are, th are treated as both woods and a hill. Therefore, the line of sight is blocked uh, if it crosses any part of the wooded hill. So. Tactile movement explains you single move, group move, column move, and flank march. Uh, all these are explained, and you can see the examples uh, in PDF form. 
tactical move distances, single moves, this is typical of the ABMM. A stand making a single stand move is free to move in any direction and rotate through any angle. Group moves, column moves, forming a column, the very TBMM rule is flank march, march moves, uh, passing through friends, interpenetration, very good rule. Uh, incidental contact while wheeling, breaking off. This is a rule I really enjoy. There's breaking off from contact, even if it's front, rear, or uh, flank. Uh, if you are faster, you need less uh, pips. If you are not faster, you have to sacrifice a lot of command points, but you can break. And that's actually a very nice innovative rule. I, I give strategic options when you are able to break. Of course, under some prerequisites and some... Um, and, uh, and, uh, 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 some uh, prerequisites and uh, uh, some uh, basics that uh, you have to follow to do this. Not everybody can, but uh, it can be done. Uh, reducing frontage. Now, design note, this move costs command points and must follow all contact restrictions regarding, and the restrictions, yeah, that was what I said before. Uh, again, when you break from... Uh, Someone, some troops must immediately pursue. So knights, elephants, warbands, and warriors must pursue. Wheeling, zone of control, very nice, easy to understand zone of control room uh, that is a, that can be blocked by a stand. That's very interesting spice to this rule set. Its zone of control can be blocked. Quite interesting. Uh, movement in the enemy zone of control, typical. You can align, you can move back, you can move forth, you can charge, you know, as a DBMM, but the block the zone block and block of control zone it's very very nice rule set conforming of course uh, moving into close combat moving into contact is a normal tactical move uh, there are no special charge moves again here it explains to you how you charge in the flank and how flank or rear charges would be eligible if you extend the side or the flank edge of your opponent and then you go to combat phase the range combat it explains to you how you can see if some if if uh, if a target is eligible if you get the path the shooting path depending on the distance that uh, you have with your opponent the shooting path is uh, or is calculated differently clear path eligibility to shoot shoot from the rear that's a very nice rule i found it in some other rules but not recently you can shoot from the rear or from the from the flank and you can get uh, you can add a negative modifiers to your opponent. That's very good because uh, it gives another strategic option. Uh, you can move your fast troops or your longbowman to attack the French knights in the flank, and uh, um, you can get uh, advantages. Here is about overlaps. An overlap can be shot and can shoot back. Uh, and now this is close combat. Regarding close combat, how you resolve it, what is flank, what can you do, uh, fighting the flank on rare. War gargons overlaps, of course, overlaps that give you plus uh, minus, give minus one per side. This has per DBMM rare support and rare support um, special cases with pikes getting more points. Um, Cross core by difficult terrain. This is very well explained. It's a DBMM like book, uh, rule set, but I consider it really a really good rule set. Rule set uphill. What's a combat edge? Because this is mentioned in the games. How you fight attacking a camp and here are the combat results of course um, you have the exemptions you have uh, 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 you know if you lose or if you draw or if you lose by more than half typical dbmm results you're shattered uh, you have shattered troops you have special cases even though something will be a draw you may lose if you have knights for example in difficult terrain the knights on difficult terrain draw but they won't break directly, they will be shattered and do a flea move. So there is a lot of extra, very nicely in incorporated rules to this DBMM-like rule set. Losing troops, winning, tr winning troops, you have all this. Um, pursuit, combat results. And these are the outcome moves, of course, fall back, pass through, push back, evade, panic, and pursue. All these are outcome moves that very clearly are explained in the rules and with the exemptions and the prerequisites to make evade, panic, destroyed, pursuit, outcome moves. 
A stunt that pursues must move directly forward its own pace depth. The pursuing stunt stops if he meets any of the following. Another stand, a camp, a possible terrain, the edge of the game board. And here we have the appendixes, the troop types, and depending on the base width, what base depth they suggest. Um, the, I like that the knights are open order, amount of knights, close combat factors, uh, shooting factors, open foot, or, or open order foot combat factors, close order foot combat factors, very clearly uh, explained, um, tactical factors, all very clearly explained. And here you go to appendices where you have all the units that are described in the army lists and the size, of the point, if they're close order or open order, if how many points they will give you and what type of troops they are. So if you go to elite troops, close order foot specialized and experience in fighting against enemy foot, equipped with armor and effective melee weapons. Examples include Spartan Theban hoplites, Roman legionaries, dismounted medieval knights, Viking house carls, etc., etc many troop types that you will find all in the army lists. And here you have assembling an army and using the Meshwesh. Meshwesh is the site I'm going to show you. Here you have an example of 100 Years War English and their opponents, their enemies, everything. And here is a brilliant part of the rule set where you have the appendices showing you diagrams, especially this movement in enemy zone of control and zone of control being blocked is very well explained. Movement here. Uh, overlaps, threats, uh, reactions, everything. Uh, it has many examples, a difficult terrain, it has also uphill, everything very well explained here. Now here in the end, uh, this is what I want to talk to you about. Here is Here are appended terrain cards. These terrain cards are given to you, there are many terrain cards by the designers to give, make you, to help you generate and uh, good terrain and uh, use them in your uh, battles. Um, here, here is the, here are the example the battle cards that I was talking to you about. These battle cards will be part of your army list and certain battle cards will be included in your army list. If you go to the Meshwesh, there is the battle cards there as a text, but there is no artwork like the one we see here. I can imagine they are ongoing, they're going to do, make them, they're gonna, I don't know, I haven't found them yet, but I think it should be under process. So this is the rule set. Brilliant. I just want to show you, you when you purchase it for $15, you get also the quick reference sheet. Very well um, explained, although the rules that have quick reference sheets, very good. But you can close combat factors, you have everything here. Uh, situations, and you have everything you, you require. Um, now, this is uh, also um, that I haven't read, but I can imagine this is. Um, Select up. This is a deployment uh, setup information. You have uh, you set up your armies and set up your game, so you have all information required regarding terrain pieces and uh, units. And here, this is very nice. A grand, uh, uh, the grand triumph. Now, this is extra rules that are given to you. It's a rough draft uh, for uh, bigger battles. Uh, that you will incorporate to the core set uh, set of rules. I haven't read it, but um, um, it is um, it, it should be interesting. I will read it and uh, get back to you. Now let's go to this web mesh. Now here this is Meshwesh. Meshwesh is the site that you have so many army lists. Let's have a look. Early Hundred Years War English here. You have invasion rating and maneuver rating. That's very important in deploying and if you will be first or second and if you will make the other person deploy first and some advantage to take. Home topography arbor, general, troop type, knights, army battle cards, it's fortified camp and prepared defenses. So these are the battle cards. So here is the, I'll show you again. Here is the army list, but you can, you can decide. You have standard triumph here, and you can go for grand triumph depending on how many commands you want. And this will change the number, the minimum, the maximum of the required troops. Every troop has a battle card that you can use. And these are the army battle cards. So prepare defenses that you press it here. And here you have the battle card. It's a draft. So I can imagine that these battle cards will be improved. They will put some, um, artwork, I imagine, as the one we saw in the rule book. So we have rule, rule change. This is very f fun because this is not an extra rule. It changes the rules. It overrides the rules, and that's very important. It's 
good idea. And also it gives you the timing and the cost, of course. So let's go and see how many army lists we have. So let's put here Roman. We have hundreds of army lists. So here, too many results. You have here in the end, you see too many results. Roman Frankish, early patrician Roman, West except Africa, early Imperian Roman, um, Massacred, Roman Armenian, uh, early sub-Roman British. You have too many. Let's put, I don't know, let's put Germans. We have Germans. Early German, early German Suevi, early German Marcomani, early German uh, uh, Batavian or Zeruski, feudal German kings or emperors. You have so many army lists. You have War of the Roses, Wars, Wars of the Roses, or Wars of the Roses English. And so you have all the details here. So you have... Um, the battle cards of the army and you have the battle cards of units so the knights will have their own battle card as a lead foot deployed deployment dismounting and they will deploy as a lead foot and here you have um, the battle card that you can use so guys um this is I, I, I wanted very much to show you this rule set because i really enjoyed reading it and i'm really looking forward when all this um uh, finishes and uh, we manage to travel back home from work um, to fight for sure a battle. It looks like a, a set of rules I enjoy. It's DPMM look-alike with some refined with refined edges, uh, improved some uh, difficult rules that DPM has, but the basic core rules are there. I can say copy paste. Um, a really good set of rules. I really enjoyed reading it. I'm really looking forward in fighting a big battle. Many options, many army lists. Um, and I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you understood the basics. I mean, I didn't explain to you the rules as such, but you can get an idea. Um, thank you for much for watching, all you guys. Stay safe. Let's hope everything will uh, will finish as uh, soon as possible, so we can go back to our lives. Uh, thank you so much for watching, and bye bye.